Windows is evolving into an agentic AI that nobody wants, and now Windows gives us warnings that your agentic AI may install malware on your computer. <laughs> so much for all that security, Windows. <laughs> this is great. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And, uh, of course, on Windows Wednesday, we do like to talk about some of the things Windows is up to. It just kind of reminds us why we're on Linux. I mean, and if you're a person that's like you're constantly getting nagged at to try OneDrive, of course, you know, you might already have it set up if you're that deep into the ecosystem. Then you get ads all over the place, constant notifications, just an operating system that will just not get out of your way. Come on, man. Try our new agent again. Why aren't you using Bing? I mean, jeez. I mean, all these types of things that Windows does. On Linux, we don't get any of that. We have operating systems that stay out of our way. Of course, I think the latest GNOME is giving you a random pop-up to donate, which is utter nonsense, but oh well. Um, however, for the most part, <laughs> for the most part, uh, you do not get annoyed. Your operating system gets out of your way and your computer does what you want it to do, not what it wants to do. And uh, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. And uh, this article here actually came out last week, and I was going to be looking at, at covering it, but it ended up coming up in an article I wanted to cover. So we'll go ahead and mention this one here. Windows president says the platform is evolving into an agentic OS, and he gets cooked in the replies. Straight up, nobody wants this, is what the... Uh, the comments are so he posts this on on X saying uh, saying that's evolving into an agentic AI and then there's a lot of comments down below. Um, of course, the uh, whole idea here is that they want to have your Windows operating system be so efficient it sits there and does all your work for you. Of course, they're doing it in such a way that it actually. Um, <laughs> They're doing it in such a way that you still have to approve what it does or at least review what it does. I'm not sure if uh, if, if you have to approve everything it does, it's going to be more annoying. And if you have to review everything it does, A, you're not going to do that, and B, the damage might already be done. Let's go ahead and have a look at what the Twitter comments were. I had to run this up in a different window because my uh, X is logged in on a different browser. But this is actually the post here. Windows is evolving into an agentic OS, connected devices, cloud, and AI to unlock intelligent productivity and secure work anywhere. Join us at MS Ignite to see how frontier firms are transforming with Windows and what's next for the platform. We can't wait to show you. Well, apparently people can wait to hear about it. Um, so, of course, uh, this is funny here. You, you can't even reply unless uh, accounts at mentioned can reply. Okay. Well, apparently you can't reply unless he's mentioned you, I guess. Is that what I'm reading? Anyway, uh, it's evolving into a product that's driving people to Mac and Linux. <laughs> Welcome to Switch to Linux. We have a lot of videos here about how to convert your workflow to Linux. So I will encourage you to think about that. Uh, stop this nonsense. No one wants this. You live in a Twitter bubble where AI will create tons of wealth and you will be and you will perish unless you adopt it now. But your users are not in this bubble. They don't care about any of this bleepies. They chat with ChatGPT and that's about it. You know, and I got to say, guys, I'll do a video on it uh, soon after I get more testing done. But I actually installed the Olama, the self-hosted AI system on a local server. Um, and then I played around with Gemma 3 and I was asking it some content matter that I'm very familiar with. And I found it um, woefully lacking. And the problem is, is we have entire workflows which are handing everything over to the AI. Now, if you use it as an expert to... Uh, gather some thoughts and opinions and work on stuff, you know, it can be a beneficial thing, but to hand everything over, and that's what a lot of companies are laying off employees to hand everything over to the AIs. We have situations where, um, where individual people are, are, utilizing AI just to produce a bunch of AI slop and just release it into the world. And it causes a serious degradation. So, you know, and that's one of the problems I have with cramming AI everywhere. If I want to use it, I will use it but I don't want it crammed into every nook and cranny of everything I have. This is even becoming an issue with, uh, with Firefox. We might talk about that sometime soon. 
Uh, the latest Firefox is trying to cram in a bunch of AI stuff and agentic stuff. And so people are saying, hey, would you stop doing this? Like, or have two separate browsers, one of them without all this nonsense and the other one, this super thing that, you know, you can install and do it. But that's kind of the problem with Windows right now is people by and large do not want an operating system so integrated with AI that the thing annoys the hell out of you when you just want to turn on a web browser and watch a movie or something like that, you know. Um, nobody wants us crap uh, except parties you're selling our data to without permission. That would be why I moved away from uh, Windows into Linux. Uh, here's a crazy idea. How about give us back Windows 7? Clean UI, clean icon, unify control panel, no bloat apps, no ads, just a pure performant OS. I agree. Or you know what? Give us a version of Windows 11 that has no bloat, no AI, no online forced nonsense, just a core operating system. The same thing we can accomplish with the tiny core application. We talked about that in a previous video. The same thing we mentioned in that video, Microsoft is capable of doing something like that. Like that. They just don't want to. They want you always online authenticated exactly who you are. They want to collect as much data about you as possible, and they want to cram their... Uh, their uh, monopolistic AI crap down your throat at all times. And that's why they don't do it. And only when enough people push back that it drives people away might they think about those options, but they need to. People need a stable OS on their computers they own, not the shareholder meeting talking point serving spyware platform that is now. Just sell LTSC. There you go. So that's the version of Windows that is stripped down mostly for embedded systems. Uh, you can't even correctly implement small taskbar icons, which is something users actually want. <laughs> you are getting overwhelmingly negative feedback about this AI stuff, and yet you persevere. Why? <laughs> the data. <laughs> what the blankies are you even talking about? I don't need or want any of that. Darn tootin' says, well, darn tootin' he's right. <laughs> okay macro block no one wants this we need our os to be stable and robust and predictable uh this guy we mm, hate you at microsoft we've mm, windows okay uh maybe you should pay attention to the unanimously negative replies here and adjust your goals accordingly <laughs> yeah right it's microsoft i'm not going to do that there is not a sane person here alive on earth who wants any of this garbage. Whoever's making these decisions that Microsoft should be fired and put on trial for criminal charges against humanity. <laughs> Why do people say X is such a dumpster fire? This is great. you know. Uh, for the first time since 1982, I no longer have a Microsoft operating system on any of my computers. I just closed my Microsoft 365 account and repatriated my data. I have replaced Office. I no longer use Azure nor any other Microsoft languages, databases, or development environments. There you go. Ron Dunn's doing it right. Speak with your wallets, folks. We are making an agentic shh. <laughs> okay, you can see this is overwhelmingly negative stuff. We're not going to read all of the comments. They just do keep on going. It's still trying to load. They're, hey, we've got Starlink ads. Look at that. Um, so we get all sorts of this kind of stuff there. Uh, but what really is uh, the biggest challenge here is that, uh, well, in light of all of this nonsense, um, <laughs> um, Microsoft now is sitting back and... Uh, Microsoft is now sitting back and um, warning that agentic AI could install malware on your PC. And they say only install this feature if you understand the security implementations, which is very interesting indeed. And so uh, having a look at this article here, they're pushing ahead with a plan to add agentic capabilities in Windows 11, but it's issued a support important security warning for anyone interested in trying it out. So it is issued a warning and saying the AI capabilities are now opt in primarily because they are concerned about the um, uh, the prompt injection bugs, which uh, was at Proton, I think, did some excellent work discussing in the perplexities. Uh, is there's the Comet browser and whatever perplexities browsers? I think it was that one. Um, so in the new support document, the company warns users should only enable this feature if you understand security implement, uh, implications and it's confirmed that because of the potential dangers, it is off by default. So they are literally cramming agentic AI 
into a Microsoft product, which they know decreases security. So remember a couple years ago when they said, well, our entire salary bonus platform for our C-suite is going to be tied to security. Now Microsoft is cramming an agentic AI system into the operating system they are forcing on people against people's desires that actually reduces security. What type of clown world are we living in? They say this setting can only be enabled by an administrator, user of the device, and once enabled, it is enabled for all users on the device, including other administrators and standard users. They confirm when enabled, it will create local user accounts for different agentic AI agents, which will have access to your personal folder. And so any agentic AI will have access to view anything in your documents, downloads, desktop, video, pictures, music, when the setting is enabled. So they pushed a support document indicating how it's going to work. The new agentic workspace, it will allow AI-powered apps to complete tasks on your behalf. Agents will operate in their own secure desktop environment, but with access to your apps and files. So it is in, a, in its own environment with access to all of your applications and all of your files, which basically means, yes, it can do other things. Now, they say, though, the problem is, is that um, it will it has a potential to have the cross prompt injection or um, and that's the problem. AI applications introduce novel security risks such as cross prompt injection where malicious content embedded in UI elements or documents can override agent instructions leading to an unintended actions like data exfiltration or malware installation. So they can write UI scripts which will pass your personal data from your folders back into them without actually giving you any of that in their other information, like uh, without you even knowing it's going on. Uh, so because of it, it has outlined a number of design principles that it wants to follow when it comes to agentic experiences, including ensuring AI is always observable and that any decisions it wants to make will be approved by a human first. So now you have to tell your computer to do a task, but you have to sit over its shoulder the whole time, which means it's not actually saving you any time. It's not actually doing anything for you other than making you tell it to do something and lean back in your chair and boringly watch the screen and waiting for it to ask, is it okay to do this? And then you're going to be sitting there like, is this okay to do this? Yes. Is it okay to do this? Yes. Is it okay to do this? Yes. Is it okay to do this? Yes. Kind of like, uh, Way back in the um, uh, back about the time of uh, uh, was was it the end of the Mayan calendar? I think it was either that one or it was the Harold camping situation back about uh, 15 or so years ago. And uh, the oatmeal released a cartoon and it was God installing the rapture program. He got so frustrated. Going, yes, 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 yes. That he failed to upload the uh, list of believers that were saved from rapture. Um, so, you know, and that's the problem is now you have to sit here and babysit this thing and answer. Yes, you can do this to everything. You're going to pay less attention to what's going on than if you were to do it all yourself. There is absolutely no earthly reason to install this crap on your computer, yet they are forcing and merging the system with it, even though it decreases the security of the platform. What happened to giving us an operating system that simply gets out of our way, allows us to do our work, and then if we want to use some AI platform, we can install something access it online or use whatever means hey maybe even install some windows bloatware ai nasty pack and uh it just it's available in the store uh the ai bloatware application from the windows store install this and uh you have all of the ai what happened to that option that's the option that would work now at this point in time i like linux so much i probably wouldn't swing back but if they had approached it from the beginning to say all data collection is optional. All this Microsoft accounts are optional. All this for security is optional. If they had approached it with that original approach, I probably would have stayed with Windows and would have never walked down this amazing journey of meandering down through Linux and learning all of the things that I've learned in that time. So if you want to have a look at Linux, what can Linux do? I'll provide here a comprehensive review of Linux Mint, the distribution I recommend people try out if you want to switch to Linux. Just have a look at that video and see what it can do and uh, see if that might be an option for you. And then we have uh, many other videos on the channel to talk about 
how you can switch to Linux and how you can even try Linux without messing up your current Windows implementation if you want to try that. So with that, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.